Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna to answer a question that a subscriber messaged me and kind of left in one of the comments. And it was, Dimitri, can you talk about why you didn't go into trading? So it's kind of a complex answer, and it's not as cut and dry and black and white as many of you are going to think. Well, let's kind of go back through my career here on explaining why I haven't gone into trading um, as a professional career here and why I went into risk management. So it's not just why I didn't go into trading, you have to understand why I went into risk to kind of understand this. So I started off with an undergrad, I went for a finance degree, right? Um, we had a trading club like almost every finance university has, you know, and we're managing, I don't know, 1.2, 2.4, or $6 million, whatever the amount was for the fund. Um, and they had the cool trading room and we'd go in and we'd do like our Morningstar reports or we had the Morningstar terminals and you could do research and we'd write these stock reviews and do an analysis. And I really liked it and had like the stock tickers going across the top and I like, I don't know, a professor that we had um, who I wasn't a big fan, I was kind of a dick, but he would explain, you know, what trading was like and everything. But of course it was like, I don't know, 15 years before we were in there. So, I mean, that was like 2000 and probably nine, but I was taking this class. So 15 years before that was in the nineties. Um, anyways, and then I went through it all and I really wanted to go into trading because I wanted that the ability to make my own money, use my intelligence, my strategy, and build trading strategies on my own, be kind of self-employable, self-dependent, right? I don't need a company. I don't need a boss telling me what to do. Um, you can make really good money being a trader. So this was the route that I wanted to go. Um, and then I ended up taking my last semester, a class taught by one of the finance PhDs who had a master's already in mathematics from a different university. Um, and she taught like a bare bones, introduction, quant finance for business people, and it just blew my mind, right? I just loved it. We priced futures and forwards. Uh, we went to like option pricing, for example. Uh, I liked it. It was really exciting. It was really different. And then I graduated and I couldn't find a job. And I came to this realization that like I graduated with a finance degree and it seemed like too simplistic. Like I didn't feel like I had the tools to really do finance the way I imagined it, right? I imagined this really high rigor, this highly competitive, industry where everyone's doing you know cutting edge technology and you're trying to get to that next leap of i don't know breakthrough of equations and trying to figure things out and i liked as part of this that you know i knew that financial markets were unsolvable like there's no magic solution and so for me i wanted that challenge i wanted something different something unique uh, again i wanted to be able to build my own strategies and do all this and then i came across a guy at us bank so big shout out to ron here uh, he sat down with me and took the time to actually go through my goals, right? And he worked in sales and trading on the sales side. He had friends that worked in trading. He tried trading. Uh, he talked about, you know, trading was really challenging. He explained that to me, why he ended up going into sales. And I enjoyed it and I ate up everything and I wrote down all these notes and he like made a plan with me on like how to get in what you're trying to do, what the skills are, right? Trying to give me that real world experience kind of view here. So I really appreciated that. And then I went back for a master's because I realized I was unemployable with a finance degree. I was never gonna end up in quant finance and doing what I wanted to do. I went through quant finance. Um, and then I started realizing as I started meeting with trading firms during my, my master's here, you know, studying financial engineering and applied economics, uh, the firms had changed. The market that I was taught, things I was looking back on was back in like 2009. And now I'm sitting here in 2011, 2012, um, right, 2014, kind of that area between the end of my senior year through my master's here. And I'm starting to realize like what I was told on trading pits and excitements and floors and like the cutting edge technology and these people are doing everything and there's traders and they, you know, they're buying and selling. Right? That kind of went away. And a lot of people don't realize that. So it does still exist when you're really, really small firms. You have people that are building strategies writing code, implementing it, and trading off of it. And there are people who still utilize expertise in trading. So trading in itself has its own very unique skill set. I don't think it's really teachable in a lot of ways, but trading is, you know, having those intuitions, seeing patterns quickly, being able to capitalize on them and get out. Um, as algo trading and kind of models um, have enhanced and technology has boomed in the last, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years here uh, from now. So I don't know, say 2005 onward, maybe even 2000 onward. Uh, a lot of this technology has made the traditional trader, right, the guy in the pits, obsolete. They're, they're dead, right? I worked on Wall Street in New York City, so yes, the actual Wall Street itself. Uh, 
it's dead. Like you go and you visit New York, it's like this historic site where you walk around and it's like, cool, there's the bull and there's the, the girl. And like you go down and there's, oh, there's the exchange and there's the old office that, you know, JP Morgan himself actually worked in. And right, you see all this stuff, but it's it's dead. There's not a lot of banks left on Wall Street. They've all moved up to Midtown. They've all moved out you know, to different locations where it's cheaper for rent. Uh, and just having servers closer right to the exchanges is more important. Um, but again, it's, it's all changed. The, the trading world has changed drastically with technology. Uh, now that being said, right, firms have realized hiring that one godlike quant that's a full stack quant that can do everything from strategy to writing code to implementing to trading, it's not feasible. And the reason being is imagine a guy trading, right? You have to be live and on the computer monitoring what's going on with your models and your algorithms um, and you're trading off of these or even your strategies in general, right? But you're trying to trade off of these you have to be on when the markets are on. So you're not gonna be able to research and do idea creation and strategy development and then writing you know, C++ code for implementation here. It's not feasible, right? You're actually having to do the trading. Um, and then you switch back to that it makes more sense to, okay, let's hire a quant to do you know, the coding and perhaps the strategy development all at once. And then we'll have a guy doing the trading and the monitoring and the implementation of those models and ideas into the markets. So that makes a lot of sense. And then eventually they've kind of split it up further where it's like, it's easier to find a guy that's really good at just the quant strategy development. Uh, it's easier to find another person, individual, you know, guy, grad, gal, whatever, uh, to do implementation and like the actual programming and coding. And we can actually get, you know, undergrads and masters to do this at a lot cheaper rate um, than what we would pay someone to do the quant stuff. Not to mention, right, you have the quant, the implementation and coding and all that, and the trader all separated. It reduces risk in the fact that you're not solely dependent on one person. It also reduces stress levels in all three individuals. And it's a lot easier to find an expert in one of these areas versus finding someone that's an expert in all three. And you're never gonna find someone who's gonna be able to do all three better than everybody else in the market. So you're always gonna have someone that has a stronger suit than somebody else in a different area. So your quant strategy development skills are gonna be better or more rigorous than their computer science or you know their trading or their finance. Like, there's, you have to balance all these skill sets and so it's better and easier to find someone who specialized in one specific thing. So markets have changed drastically, trading has tra changed drastically. And then when I went for the interviews and trying to find a job after graduation, um, I started like trying to interview and I like did some with, I'm not gonna mention names here, but some of the biggest quant funds out there. Um, and one of the things that they would do for testing is you would take for a trader role, you would take, um, I'm gonna call it an IQ test, but it's not really an IQ test. It's like the speed problem solving. So I guess it's kind of like an IQ test here. Um, and what they're looking for is someone who can solve a problem very quickly, right? You recognize the pattern and then boom, you're done, right? That's what they're looking for. And so I take all these speed tests or whatever and I could never pass those. So I started realizing, okay, what is my strong suit? What am I good at? Let's rewrite my resume. I've been unemployed forever. No one will hire me. Right, I've been applying to, I don't know, everything under the sun from quant development and quant jobs, like doing strategic, uh, like stochastic calculus implementation. So for example, I interviewed at ICE, which is the Intercontinental Exchange. Um, I was doing things with like investment banking. I was trying to get jobs with corporate finance. Nothing was sticking. So I started thinking about my masters. What do I really like to do? What am I really, really good at? And for me, that thing was going to be statistics, right? It's just the class I liked the most. It was sitting down, finding some problem that was so complex and so challenging, you couldn't just solve it in an instant, right? I can't just throw it on a screen and within 10, 20 seconds, you can solve it, maybe a minute you solve it, right? It's gonna be something you're gonna sit on for a week or a month or six months, right? I'm sitting on this problem and I'm trying to solve it and I'm trying to put the stats, the theory, the finance, all together to create some sort of unique solution that's dynamic that no one else has thought about that's where I thrived. That's what I enjoyed. That's what I thought trading was going to be like from kind of that undergrad level, right? It was the strategy, the working for yourself piece, right? Being fast, crazy, having lots of money, right? It's all excitement. But when I really narrowed it down and went through all this process, all these life experiences, I realized what really kind of got me out of bed in the morning, what really excited me about school was sitting down with like a textbook and like just slowly working through these really complex problems, trying to figure out how everything works and is put together, right? That's what excited me. So I rewrote my resume to do that. And I didn't know what it was gonna be, just stats focused, that's what I wanted. Um, and I graduated in 2012. And it just happened at that time, risk management was this booming new area. And what did they need? They needed really strong statisticians. So I ended up mailing a job, moving down to Dallas, Texas. 
Um, I started an implementation, interesting enough, and then I kind of moved into model development and worked in a bunch of different areas with the econo economics team as well, kind of moving between projects. I took on a lot, I learned a ton there. And then I went on to do consulting, hated that, left that. And then I've gone back into you know validation, model development again, a few different companies between. And what really strikes it for me, what really excited me was the fact of sitting down and doing these big projects, right? Just three months, six month projects, right? Even when I had self-studying projects, they would take me like, I don't know, six months to a year sometimes because I'm just stuck in all the details and the grind trying to solve these things out. So for me, it just all lined up. My stats resume happened to be what everyone was looking for during that time. I ended up in risk management. For me, it's a perfect fit. Um, it has minimal stress in risk management, which I really like. I've worked from home almost my entire career um, on and off. So when I say work from home, not full time. Um, but I've been able to work from home a few days a week, be in the office a few days a week. For me, it's a perfect balance. It de-stresses me. I'm at home. I have my coffee, you know, my cats. Uh, I got everything here that I need. And then now we have the COVID thing and we're now we're working from home full time. It's had minimal impact on me. It's been great. So now to answer the question, right, that's really why I went into risk management. It fits me. It fits my style. fits who I am as a person. Uh, the skills I don't believe I have, right, I've never worked professionally as a trader. But from the exams they give, the testing they give, they're looking for people that are quick on their feet, that can solve problems quickly, okay? That's not me, that, right? I'm just gonna throw out, I'm not that guy. Uh, I don't have that skill. It's an amazing ability. Some guys just have it. I've talked to guys that have owned hedge funds and trading firms and have mentioned they have like the guy, right? There's this the guy that works there and they can give him any type of product and he just goes on. He uses the tools that are created by quants. They're implemented by a CS team. And then he's the guy using the tools as the trader and he just sees how everything works. He understands the strategy and he quickly makes decisions and gets in and out of positions and he can make money basically no matter what they do. So I've seen this, there are people out there that are just really good at it. Now, how do you get that good at it? I have no idea, right? <laughs> this, this isn't me, this isn't my strong suit here. So the main reason I didn't go into trading was again, when they were weeding people out, right? I didn't fit trading. I didn't really know it at the time, right? The experts knew it, they could see it. Um, as I talked to guys about it, they're like, yeah, I mean, you're great and everything, but you're not what we're looking for. Looking back, I understand what they're saying, right? I'm not that really sharp guy that's just solving problems quickly and efficiently and sees the patterns and puts the probability theory together and, you know, bing, bam, boom, like they're in and out, right? That's not me. Uh, I'm not a really fast thinker in that case. I'm the slow thinker. I don't think there's really people that can cover both of these very well. Um, so for example, when I took these exams, right, it says like some problem, I'm looking at it like I don't wanna miss the problem. I'm more concerned about being correct than I am concerned with the timing. So I'm sitting there looking at it and I kind of get an answer and then I recalculate it through my head and I make sure I've got the right answer and then I put it down. Uh, that's not what they're looking for for traders, looking for people that see it, recognize it, put down the answer and move on quickly and they're in and out you know, quick. I don't have that skill. It's a very unique skill. I don't know how else to explain it here, right? It sounds really simple, like, oh, you think fast, but thinking fast, thinking slow, I think are very contrasting skill sets for quants and traders. It's one reason I think that quants and traders don't mix as the same role a lot of times because they're just so different in the, the way you mentally process and go through things. Um, so for risk management, like I said, I've done model development. So actually going through, looking at statistics, using financial theory, building the models, back testing, going through the process, looking at them again, getting everything nailed down, going through senior management, explaining these to other people. And then we pass them off to an implementation team who implements these in C++ or C Sharp. Um, so I've done that, I enjoy that. Validation's similar, but it's looking backwards now in that development cycle, problem solving, going through those kind of nitty gritty details, figuring out what was done right and wrong, right? It's not gonna be something you just like, oh, steps one to five and you're in and out. Uh, it's that really deep kind of thinking. So that's why I went into risk. I'm not good at fast thinking. That's why I didn't go into trading. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, until next time. <laughs>